Hello everybody and thank you for joining us for another exciting edition of the Nozone holiday season. My name is Wanja. And I'm Charlie. Now, I'm sure you've noticed by now, we're doing things very, very differently. Now, before we get any further into the show, why don't we start by refreshing our memory as to what the buzzwords are, and then we can go hang out with the Junction Juniors and find out what they're up to in Makutani. Hospital. Medicine. Disease. Virus HIV Protect Record Conserve Reverse Information Junction Juniors I think your teacher just wanted to confuse you. That sum is way too difficult. I agree. I don't think anyone could answer it. James, you're brilliant at math. You must be able to help Babu. Good morning, boys and girls. Good, Good morning, morning, teacher. Why are you looking at me like a mango tree? Get your books. We need to understand fractions to answer this question. Now, how many patients are there? Can you concentrate? I'm teaching here, not washing a cow. How many patients are there? Bakari? 50 patients. And how many patients have malaria? 10 patients. We have a fraction, but we have to reduce it. Who will help me? Leleti, why are you seated back there like a random kitten? Leleti, are you okay? Are you sad that Habiba is no longer Junction Junior? I'm fine. But what did you want us to help you with? Why? Are you that deep in thought? How many patients have malaria? What are you talking about? Are you, are you sick? Do you have diarrhea? <laughs> she might come and she does want to see. I'm sorry, I can't bear Junction Junior anymore. What? 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 You all have to. You shouldn't have left at her. She's obviously upset about something. She could be missing her baby now that she's moved up country. I'm also sad that we won't be seeing her again. We all are, but she should know when we are joking. And besides, she could be suffering from diarrhea. You know, I had it last week and I just couldn't concentrate at school. Something must be upsetting Leleti. She's never acted like this before. Nita is right. We need to go and find her. Where will we start? When I'm sad. There's a special place I go to think and feel peaceful. Follow me. Bakari, I know we'll find her here. Yaladi, what's wrong? Please tell us. We're your friends. We're here to help you. I'm sorry I made fun of you. Don't worry. Brian was just being his usual silly self. Leleti, the Junction Juniors are a family, and what hurts you will hurt all of us. Please tell us what's wrong, and we promise we'll help you. Are you sure? Yes. We are the Junction Juniors. Help is our middle name. My mother is going to die soon. What has happened? This morning, she sent me to get some money from her handbag for my lunch. When I was looking, I found... You can trust us, Leleti. What did you find? I found a packet of medicine. There were ARVs. What are ARVs? They're the medicine that people take when they have AIDS. My mother has AIDS and she's going to die. Leleti, calm down. You need our help. Never coming down. I think we had better see Dr. Charles. This is a very big problem. I agree. 
Lelati, are you coming with us to see Dr. Charles? I said I'm never coming down from this tree, ever. Okay, we'll go and ask him to come and talk to you here. I'll stay with Lelati. Okay, bye. We'll be back soon. Thanks, Bakari. AIDS is a disease that's caused by a tiny germ <laughs> called HIV. You know, when our bodies are strong and healthy, they can protect us from diseases, just like a superhero fighting the bad guys. But once you've gotten this HIV germ, your body becomes very, very weak. And that's why people with HIV become very, very sick. But doctors can give them medication, such as ARV, that can help them live a long and happy life. So Lelati's mother is right by taking the medication. Now, James, 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 I suggest you take these leaflets, give them to Liletti, and make sure she reads them and know the facts about HIV and AIDS. Now, the rest of us, we are going to see somebody who can help Liletti and the mother. Oh, someone who is living with the HIV germ, and the living proof that one can live a long and happy life. Come on, let's go. Thanks, Dr. Charles, you're the best. How is she? She hasn't stopped crying. Did you see Dr. Charles? Yes, and he gave us this pamphlet which contained information of HIV and AIDS and ARVs. Can I see them? How are we going to get her to come down? I can see you brought me guests. How yeah. are you, children? Yeah, I'm fine, thank you. Oh. No, no, my, Margaret, my, my friends here would like you to help them. Me? Help them? So how can I help you? It was so hard for me to accept that I had the HIV virus. I thought I was going to die. I did not know what to tell my children. And for a long time, I kept it to myself, just like your mother. But you should have told me. I know, Leleti, but believe me, it is not easy. Trust me, your mother loves you very, very much. And she wants to tell you. And when she does, she'll need you to be very, very brave. Leleti is the bravest person we know. Leleti, I know you are scared, but with the doctor's help and support of people like Margaret here, your mother can live a very long and happy life. Mm. Mm, just like me. I have the HIV virus. Do I look like I'm dying anytime soon? Yeah, your mother is going to be just fine. I'm going to help her, and the doctors are going to give her all the medicine that she needs. Cindy, now you calm down. Eh? And then I give you a big hug. Come on. Yeah, she's a good girl. Yeah. Hey. Now we have a fraction, one over five, a fifth. Yay! Thanks, James. Now I understand fractions much better. Password. Hospital. Spelling. H-O-S-P-I-T-A-L. Yay! Junction Juniors, I've just been at the hospital with my mother, and the doctor says she'll be just fine as she takes her medicine. And Margaret has offered to be her treatment support and give her encouragement. Yay! 
I'm so pleased for you, Leleti. That's good. Thanks, Junction Juniors. I'm so proud to be a Junction Junior. Junction Juniors are always there for those in need. Give him a name. What is going on here? I came so early and hiya. It was stuck in the bush with a plastic paper bag around its neck. It could have died. I cut it out of the bag, but I don't know how to get the rest of its neck out without hurting it. Fine, I'll start without you. And I'm changing the password. Hey, you can't change the password. And you can't start until the letter and Bakari are here. Let's take it inside. Dumping yeah, people just throw their rubbish wherever they want. It's so wrong. We need to clean this place and protect our environment. Ouch! Uh -huh. Oh no, Bakari, are you okay? These are my only shoes and they are ruined. What am I going to do now? Bakari's shoe. There's litter everywhere. The whole forest has become a dumping ground. Yes, this puppy we found this morning was caught in a plastic bag. He's so cute. At least he didn't get hurt. This is horrible. We must do something at the Junction Juniors. Why don't you take the puppy to Maspidi? He'll know what to do. That's a great idea. And as the Junction Juniors, we need to protect the environment for the animals and everyone. What can we do? How do you have use our hands? We can do a lot with our hands. We can pick all the litter and stop it from spreading. But how does pollution spread? Odd Chateau does that. If you drop litter, it might go to the rivers, then it poisons the fish, goes to the lakes, to the oceans, and then pollutes the whole world. That's why we have to make a change by starting right here in Makutano. We can name this day Makutano Environment Day. Who's with me? Yay! There, plastic goes with the other pile. This is a biodegradable pile. Biod? What? That's and a fake word. You're not going on Uno's big word. <laughs> Say it's who? Ah! Stop fighting! Brian is using fake words. Lelady 
knows what biodegradable means, don't you? When something is biodegradable, it can safely rot and be absorbed by the environment, like food scraps. So in this pile, we are collecting rubbish that won't rot, like plastic. This is the stuff that really spoils the environment, because it lies about for years and years, choking dogs and cutting shoes. Hey, guess what? Masfidi agreed to keep the puppy, and he gave us this rack to collect the rubbish. And on our way back, we found these keys next to the road. Who threw away their keys? I don't think anyone threw them away. They could be lost. I wonder what they use. Probably a door with all sorts of amazing things inside it. The person who lost them probably needs them back. But how do we find the owner? Makutona is a big place. And we still have so much cleaning to do, eh? We shall split up. Bakari Brian and I will stay here and do the cleaning. You, Babu and Leleti can go and find out who owns the keys. I want to go to town. I will stay here and clean. Everybody must do their part, even you. Come on, Brian, I'm working. What are you young ones doing here? Chief Matano, we're clearing up the forest because we noticed how much litter was being dumped there. Yes, Leleti here declared it the Mokutano Environmental Day. Ah, that is a very, very good initiative. Yes, and we've cleared about a quarter of the forest. By now, they should have cleared another quarter. Two quarters make a half. I like very much everything that I am hearing. In fact, to help you with your project, uh, let me give you this data book. That way you can record all the information about what you find. Thank you. But when we were clearing up, we found these keys. In the forest? Yes, but we don't know who owns them. Could you please help us? I also have no idea whom they belong to. But maybe we could check with the Mze Baraka. They might be the ones for his hardware show. Thank you, Chief Matano. <laughs> Ah, Mze Baraka. Good <laughs> Chief. How are you? Hello, Mr. Baraka. How are you? I'm fine. What can I do for you today? We are holding the Makutano Environmental Day. And uh, while these Makutano juniors were clearing up, they came across these keys in the forest. Do you know who owns them? I don't know. They don't look familiar. I'm sorry. I'm very impressed with what you're doing. Hey, Jerry. Now, taking care of the environment is very, very important. And I want to offer my help. Now, I want you to use these in whatever you do to protect the environment. And I give them to you free of charge. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Baraka. Thank you. Bye. 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 Plastic bags on the tree. I think the trees are much happier now. The whole forest is happier. We did a great job. I still wonder how we are gonna transport all this trash to the dump site. We can't leave it here. Hey, you guys, look at all of these things we got to help us with the clearing. That's oh. amazing. Now we can transport the rubbish to where it won't harm anyone. But I still wonder whose keys those belong to. Hello, Mr. Josiah. Uh, are you all right? I'm fine. I'm just looking for something very important here. I wonder where they could be. Uh, Mr. Josiah, yeah? do those belong to you? What? Oh, oh, yes. Oh, thank you very much. <laughs> thank you very much. You've saved me. <laughs> there are rewards. Actually, sir, we don't want a reward, but we could use your help. With our extra pair of hands, we can clean this place once and for all.
put a shoe back I wish you could help fix them. Don't worry about me. At least we did something to clean the forest. Mm. <laughs> Our Makutano Environment Day was a great success, but we need to encourage other children to stop dropping litter. for Maktano, so we all came together and did something for you. It's not signed. So those two exciting episodes of the Junction Juniors, I hope now you realize how important our health and environment are. That's right, Wanja. But right now, let's go and join Teacher Pendo for more learning on hot numbers. Hello everyone and welcome to Hot Numbers. I'm sure you're all very excited about today's lesson. Yeah. Great. Today we are going to learn about fractions. In our first episode, we looked at whole numbers and we looked at numbers from one to a hundred. Now you need to remember that a fraction is part of a whole number. A fraction is part of a whole number. Oh, math is getting harder as weeks progress. Oh, don't give up just yet. Math is so much fun. You just need to give it a little try, okay? Oh, well, okay. Now, in front of me, I have a rectangle, okay? How many rectangles do I have? One. This is a whole rectangle, and we'll call it the number one, okay? Yes. Now, my next rectangle has a line running right across the middle, okay? Yes. Now, how many rectangles do I have? Yes, Mongangi? One. Good. Now I have one rectangle, but how many parts can you see? Two. That's right, there are two parts. Now, I want us to shade one part of this rectangle. So how many parts have we shaded? Yes, Karanja? One. That's right. I have shaded one out of two. So, we write it like this. Now, I have shaded half of this rectangle. Half is a fraction, and we write it like this. Okay? Yes! Good. Now, I have another rectangle here. How many parts has it been divided into? Whoa! Brilliant! Good. Now let's shade one part of this rectangle. How many parts have we shaded? Yes, Judy? One. I have shaded one. Okay. Now, we have shaded one out of four. We call this a quarter and we write it like this. Okay? Yes. Good. So, Marara, what have we done so far? You have shown a half and a quarter. And we call these fractions and they are part of a whole number. Well done, Marara. I am very impressed. Now, here are some rectangles. They have been divided into different parts. Now, I want you to shade one part of the rectangle and then together we'll work out what fraction of the rectangle you will have shaded. Okay? Well, please feel free to join at home. If you have your rectangles, just divide them into parts and then shade one part. Have you all finished? Yes! Now, let's see what we have here. We have one part 
out of three. So one out of three has been shaded. And we call this a third, okay? Yes. Let me pick from this side now. So we have one, one part out of five. five. We call this a fifth, okay? Yes. And we write it like this. Remember that your bottom number is determined by how many parts you have. We have five parts here, and that's why we've written five at the bottom, okay? Yes! Good! Now that we know how fractions are written, it's important to know that the top number is called the numerator. What do we call the top number? The numerator. Now, the bottom number is called the denominator. What do we call the bottom number? The denominator. Excellent. Now, let's shade another part of this rectangle. Mm hmm. Now, what do we have here? How many parts do we have in total? Three. Uh -huh. And how many parts have we shaded? Two. So we have two out of three. We call these two thirds, okay? Yes. We can go on shading and increasing the numerator, but what you need to remember is that if you shade all the parts, it's no longer a fraction, but a whole number, okay? Yes! Well done, everyone. Why don't you keep shading and work out the fractions as you go on? After that revision lesson on fractions, it's time now to take a break, so don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Shake your Right now, let's go and join Maspidi, who has somewhere interesting to take us on Out, out there. there. Oops. Uh, oh, what has happened? No, I've had an accident. I must have fainted. Oh, I feel so dizzy. I need to go to the hospital to see a doctor. I'm at the hospital waiting to see the doctor. Look at all these patients. I wonder how many patients the doctor sees in one day. He is the doctor. I'm sure he'll be able to tell me why I feel weak and dizzy. I hope he doesn't need to inject me. Dizzy, tired, okay. muscle pains and joint pains. How long have you been having these problems? Oh, for the last two weeks. For the last two weeks. Mm -hmm. Okay, I need to take your temperature. Now I'm also going to examine your chest. Mm -hmm. You need to take a deep breath in and out. Sent you to the laboratory for some investigations, okay. and you can be able to come up with a diagnosis. Okay. I'm going to the laboratory to have some tests done. This is where people come to be tested for diseases such as malaria and typhoid. 
I'm giving the laboratory technician my form from the doctor. He will read it, decide which tests I need. Oh no, he's going to use needles. Oh, I hope it doesn't hurt. First, he needs to do a blood test. He uses a clean needle to pierce my skin. Ouch! <laughs> it doesn't hurt that much. Now he'll test my blood for diseases and infections. Thank you. Oh. The technician looks at my blood through the microscope for any sign of infection that may explain why I became dizzy and fainted. Okay, the lab results shows that you are not suffering from malaria, as I earlier thought. Mm -hmm. So probably it's just fatigue. So you need a bed rest and some painkillers probably for the headache. <laughs> oh, just to have a rest? That's it? Oh, thank you. Oh, excuse me. Oh, I can't Rab. understand the prescription. Oh, my dear, I'm going to go to the hospital. What? You know, going to the stress. Hooray! I'm not sick, I'm just fatigued. <laughs> Finally, I need to get my tablets from the dispensary. If I take the tablets as the doctor tells me, I'll soon be healthy again. Thank you. Children, it's very important to visit a doctor when you're sick so that you can be treated and become healthy again. Go away! Oh, leave me alone! Ah, help me! I'm being chased by a bee! I shouldn't be afraid of something so small, should I? Especially when bees are so important to our environment. Come, let me show you one of the most efficient laboratories in the world, the beehive. Come, and let me show you why you love honey so much and how it is made. Oh, oh sorry, and remember to wear your protective gear, they sting. Did you know that it's not just humans who eat honey? Bees also eat it. The first step in making honey begins when the bees fly from flower to flower collecting the sweet juices and nectar that a flower provides. With their tongues, the bees suck out the nectar and stores it in sacks within their bodies. After filling their sacks with sweet juices, the bees fly back to the beehives and empty their sacks. When the bees have turned the nectar into honey, it is ready for harvesting. Let's give it a go. I'm going to collect some honey now. I know the bees will want to protect it. So I am wearing protective clothing so that they can't sting me. In order to prevent the bees from stinging us while we take their honey, the beekeeper blows smoke into the beehive. The smoke makes the bees sleepy and less aggressive. This is honeycomb. Can you see the small holes? These are cold cells. This is where the bees store their honey. Wow! Can you see all the honey in the comb? Does it look delicious? The beekeepers collect as much honey as possible so that they can sell it to people like me and you. Honey is a very healthy way of making your food taste sweet. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Woo! Honey, honey. <laughs> ah, ah, kazi bado, kazi bado. Bado kuna processing that tujafanya. I thought the work was done. Harvesting the honey is only part of the process. Before the honey can be eaten, it is taken to a laboratory where it is tested to make sure it is clean and safe to eat. I hope it passes the test. Oh, 
Oh, great! The honey is clean and perfect for eating. Okay, thank you, Mwalimu. Thank you so much. See you again. Asante. Oh, it's been one gut taking operations for me. But now that I have some honey to take away with me, it's worth it. <laughs> Wow, I had no idea that there was so much information on the process of making honey. Oh yes, and that just made me feel very hungry. Anyway, yeah. did you notice how brave Maspidi was when he went to the dispensary? Yeah, I did. Now, we're glad that you're still with us. After those two excellent out there's, I think it's time for us to put our thinking caps on and start seeing if we can spell as many words as our competitors on Spell It. But first, why don't we join Teacher Pendo in the Learning Zone for cool words. everyone and welcome back to Cool Words. It's always a pleasure helping you improve your English. Oh, hello Marara. You came in very quietly. Have you also come to improve your English? Yes, I love these lessons. So what are we learning about today? Today we are learning about adverbs. Adverbs are words that describe the way we do things. Oh, you mean like when I came in very quietly? Exactly. You're so clever, Marara. So quietly is an adverb. Can you use some other adverbs to describe how you could have come in? Yes, if I came in speaking loudly, then you could say I came in noisily. So noisily is an adverb. Well done, Marara. Now, can you make a sentence using those adverbs? Uh, yes. I came in very noisily, speaking loudly. You are right. You have used two adverbs. Can you see the words that we have used to describe how Marara came in? Yes! Okay, which ones are they? Yes, Sisoka? Noisily and loudly. Well done. Noisily and loudly are adverbs, just like quietly. They describe how Marara came in. Now, let's say them together. Noisily, loudly, loudly quietly. quietly. Well done. Now, do you notice anything that is similar with these words? Yes, Judy? Yes, they all end with L-Y. Oh, mm -hmm. yes. So we say it quietly, noisily, and loudly. And they all end with the letters L-Y. Well done, you two. You're absolutely right. Adverbs always end with li. Okay? Now, can you identify the adverbs in this sentence? Listen carefully. The boy ate his food quickly and hungrily. Did you spot those adverbs? There were two. So how did the boy eat? Yes, Karanja? He ate hungrily. Yes, he did. So hungrily is an adverb. Yes, Mwangangi? He ate quickly. Well done. Quickly is also another adverb. Oh, yes. And I can see, Teacher Pendo, that both these words end with li. Yes, they do. And they tell us how the boy ate. So adverbs are describing words like adjectives. Well, adjectives are words which describe a noun. Adverbs are words which describe a verb. Now, who can think of a verb? Yes, Wanjiro? To talk. Well done. Talk is a verb. Now, let's use the verb talk to think of some more adverbs. For example, if I talk like this, how am I talking? Oh, you sound very angry, Teacher Pendo. Aha, uh -huh. so how can you describe how I've talked? You talked very angrily. Well done. Now, someone else try. Yes, Mutua? To talk slowly. So I see, Teacher Pendo, slowly is an adverb. That's right, Marara. Can anyone think of another way I could have talked? Yes, Karanja? You could talk quietly. That's right, quietly. So quietly is another adverb. Anyone else? Yes, Mwangangi? You could talk excitedly. Excellent. Excitedly is another adverb. Now let's try another verb. Yes, Wanjiro? To clap. Great. Let's think of some adverbs to describe how we could clap. Someone clap for us. Yes, Kamau. So how is Kamau clapping? Yes, Mutua. He is clapping quickly. Aha. Uh -huh. Anyone else? Yes, Mutua. How is Mutua clapping? Yes, Judy? He's clapping loudly. So loudly is an adverb. Excellent. I can see you've all got it. Now, why don't you keep playing quietly amongst yourselves? Marara, can you think of another verb? Shake your bones.
Animal. Animal. Chapter. Building. Narrow. Respect. Respect. D. Vegetable. Work. 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 Welcome to Spell It. Vivian, Lorraine, and Barack. You're about to step out of the shadows and into the light to compete for the top prize of the Nozon Spelling Champion, in which the winner will go home with your very own Nozon Dictionary. Each contestant has just 30 seconds to spell correctly as many words as possible. If you want to hear the word again, simply say repeat and it will be repeated for you. Now each word is worth one point, which means the more words you spell correctly, the greater your chances of winning. Are the rules clear? Yes. yes. Vivian, you're up first. Please take your place on the spelling zone. Vivian. Your 30 seconds start now. Green. G R E E N. Lick. L A K E. Clean. C L E N A N. Forest. F O R E S T. Protect. P R O T E C T. Recycle. R I S Y L L Y. Collect. C O L C E T. Replace. R E P L A S E. Compound. Time is up. Well done. Good. Vivian. Well done. Lorraine, you're up next. Please take your place on the spelling zone. Lorraine, your 30 seconds start now. Care. C A R E. Shoe. S H O E. Hive. H I V E. Fight. F I G H T Valley V A W L E Y Dispose D I S P O S E Record R E C O R D Litter L I W T E R Environment Time is up. Well done, Good. well done. Barack, you're up next. Please take your place on the spelling zone. Barack, your 30 seconds start now. Tree. T-R-E-S <coughs> double E. River. R-E-A-V. Snake. E. S-N-A-K-E. Honey. H-O-N-E-Y. Harmful. H-O... Time's, Time's up. up. Good. Well done, Bart. Well done. That was a tense edition of No Zone Spell It. Let us announce the scores in reverse order. Now, in third place, we have Barak. Let's give him a round of applause, everyone, please. Round of applause, round of applause. Okay. Now, in second place, with a total of five points, we have Vivian, which means our winner today and No Zone Spell It champion is Laureen with eight points. Let's give a round of applause. Laureen. <laughs> Congratulations, Laureen. You are today's No Zone Spell It Champion. Good. Show everyone your dictionary. Another round of applause, please. Well done. Well done. Hello, children. You see this beautiful tree? Actually, we just created it by using just leaves that you pick up on the road and some paint. So what we're going to be doing is trying to do a bit of leaf printing and then we'll also play around with stencils. But I'll show you what that is when we get to it. So I'm just gonna put a bit of the paint and then I'm going to take a brush. Don't put any water in your paint because if you do that, then the leaf won't print well. And then I'm just going to dab it on there. Okay, so now I take my leaf and I just place it anywhere on the paper and just dab it softly, okay? Then when you feel like it's ready, pull it up. See, I've got a print. I can try and do another print with the same ink. 
Well, it gives me a kind of weak print, but it's there, and I think that's perfectly fine. So I want to try a different color. Let's see. Mix it in. A very bright orange. Okay. This time, actually, I'll work on the back of the leaf. Then I decide where do I want to put this one? Maybe somewhere here. Oof, I like what's happening here. So if I have something like this, will it print? Let's try it. So I'm just going to add in blue. Why not? With the red, it'll make me a purple. You notice my leaves are any color I want, right? So you can just have fun with it. I'm afraid that if I just put it with my hand, it's going to be very messy. I'll just take a piece of newspaper. I need to be able to press it all down at the same time. Let's see what happened. See, it gave me a print. So you can use natural things that you just pick up in nature, or you can make what is called a stencil. A stencil is basically a pattern that you cut out and then you can just repeat. You can use whatever heavy paper you have. So I'm using scissors again. Gotta be careful. You have to be careful with scissors. So I fold the paper in two just to help me to make the pattern. It's good if it's something simple. Cut out the shape that I drew. So you want to be able to open it and see a pattern. Now this is what you're going to use as your stencil. Okay, so I'll just show you how you do this. So you need your dry, dry brush again and just dab softly. So you're not painting. You're actually just dabbing the paint on there. So I just lift it up slowly. As long as you made a nice stencil that you really like, you can keep repeating this over and over and over again until you have enough. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep doing this and then I'll show you how it looks in the end. Here it is, you see kids, how far I've come. So I'm going to put in the trunk. I start somewhere down here. And now as I get to the top, I'm going to start looking at the leaves and seeing where they lead me. On this side, I'm seeing one a bit further out. And this cluster down here needs a little branch to hold them that'll come down here. There's the tree. Let me just show it to you and you can decide whether you like it. I hope you'll try this out. Goodbye. After those wonderful reruns of Spell It and those wonderful episodes of Art Zone, I think it's time for an African tale. Oh yes, in today's story, we will learn about how the earth lost its color. Everybody. I hope you're sitting comfortably. I'm going to tell you a very special story about a little bee who wanted to protect her environment. Don't forget to look out for this week's buzzwords. Not so long ago, the whole of our land was a paradise. The grass in the valleys was a bright green. There were hundreds of trees and the flowers were all the colors of the rainbow. The rivers were such a clear blue that they sparkled and sang as they flowed through the hills and into the lakes. The lakes were full of so many fish. They were like stars in the sky. It was a beautiful and clean environment. One of the animals that lived in this paradise was Busy Bee. Busy Bee loved to fly amongst the flowers, collecting nectar to make delicious, sweet honey. Her best friend was Colorful Chameleon. Colorful Chameleon would always hide from Busy Bee, changing into the exact color of the flowers. And then he would jump out, making her laugh and laugh. One day, colorful chameleon sat on a flower waiting to surprise Busy Bee. Busy Bee flew up to him, screaming at the top of her voice. I have seen something terrible. We need to have a meeting now. Ooh. What is the problem? Asked Lizard. The humans, she cried. They are coming this way. They are going to destroy our beautiful environment. Oh, giggles, slidey snake. Who cares what humans do? Can't you see, cried Busy Bee. The smoke is destroying the air we breathe. I don't know why you're worrying, said Monkey. 
We have a big palm tree to live in. We are fine. And he left with his children who were happily juggling coconuts. Please listen to me, pleaded Busy Bee. We need to take care of our environment. It is being ruined by the human's pollution. You're a bee. You should stick to Paul Ination, not Paul Wushun. <laughs> And he crawled away, leaving Busy Bee alone with colorful chameleon, worrying about how to save their environment. Many days passed as Busy Bee flew around trying to find fresh flowers, but she couldn't find any. They had all died. While she hovered in the air, wondering where she could find some nectar, Busy Bee saw monkey's children juggling coconuts and wearing bags on their heads. Just then, one of the monkey children started to choke. He pulled at the plastic bag, but it was stuck around his neck. Help! 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 screamed Busy Bee. And Monkey swung down from a tree and pulled the bag from his son's head so that he could breathe. Busy Bee flew above the animals and cleared her throat. <coughs> this evil thing is a plastic bag. It comes from humans. Look around you, everyone. Look at what the humans have done to our paradise. All the animals fell silent. They were too sad to speak as they looked at their gray and barren land. There was no color. Suddenly, a loud and terrible noise came from across the valley. All the animals turned to look and they saw to their horror, huge, ugly machines cutting down trees and digging up the earth. Let's stop them, shouted Chameleon. Yes, shouted the animals. The bees formed a large swarm and stung one of the men who ran away. Monkey and his children pelted one of the men with coconuts and he ran away. Then Snake bit at the toes of the last man and he too ran away in fear. All the animals cheered with joy as the last of the humans left. After a few years, the countryside became colorful again. The air was fresh and the flowers began to grow so that Busy Bee could make her honey. And colorful chameleon was once again colorful. As Busy Bee was happily buzzing around, she heard a noise. She looked up and saw that it was humans. She panicked and buzzed loudly hoping to scare them away. But when she got closer, she saw that the humans weren't harming the environment. Busy Bee flew closer and heard them talking. You see, said the mother to her son, when we protect our environment, the world is much more beautiful. Busy Bee looked at her friend, colorful chameleon, and smiled. Isn't that a great story? I know I won't drop litter or plastic bags on the floor. Will you? Now that's all we have time for today. Hope to see you again soon. Goodbye. Nose on Rangers, today we're going to meet a very greedy animal who plays an important role in our environment. It's the hyena. Hyenas live in Africa in large groups called clans. These clans can include up to 80 hyenas. How many hyenas can you see here? There are three different types of hyena. The brown hyena, the striped hyena and the spotted hyena. 
These are spotted hyenas. You can tell because of the spots on their fur. How many spots can you count on their fur? Some people think hyenas sound as if they're laughing and call them laughing hyenas. Well, I know they make me laugh. Some people think hyenas are really stupid because of their large heads and the funny way they look. But hyenas are actually very intelligent animals. They're very good hunters. They can run very quickly and can run for long distances without getting tired. They hunt in parks and can even kill big animals like wildebeest. However, sometimes they hunt alone. Hyenas have excellent hearing and can see even at night. Remember I said hyenas were greedy animals? Well, that's because they sometimes steal food from other animals. How rude. Did you know that the hyena has the strongest bite of any animal of the plains? Hyenas love to eat the rotting remains of dead animals. This may sound disgusting, but actually it's very important because it stops diseases and infections from spreading to other animals. This just goes to teach us that every animal is very important and that is why we should learn all about them so that we can protect them and our wild world. That's all for now, Nozone Rangers. See you soon. Bye! <laughs>Sadly, we have come to the end of this exciting Nozon Holiday edition. But we will be back next week for more fun, facts, laughter and learning right here on the Nozone. Until then, bye. bye! Next week on the Nozone. Home. Now, every groom arrives accompanied by his family and friends in a process called a barat. Now, let's play a quick game just to make sure that you've all understood. Oh, yeah, I love games. So how do we play? And I'll use masking tape again and just join the two here. And finally, we need... He could smell the delicious food and it was making him very hungry. His stomach rumbled in protest.